sub traders today in this video on the way back from the farm take a ride with me we have to talk about risk how much to risk per trade if you've been lied to or you're being lied to so let's start with a little story about alex g some of y'all know him he's a trader I don't really know that much about him. I'm not going to say if he's a scam or whatnot, but I was on his Instagram and there was a trade. There's a post where he's like, this is how I took my account from 70,000 to 140,000 in one day. And I look at the trade and it's like a two or three R with a two or three R add on. So at most we'll say it was a five R make 70,000. It's probably less, but Say it's 5R, makes 70,000. What is he risking? $15,000 on a trade? 15 out of 70? What is that? Like 20% of the account? More, right? So he's risking, let's say, I don't know. Let's say he's risking 20% of his account on certain trades that he likes. And then the next video I click on, he says, never risk more than 1% per trade. So that this is my contention is, Everybody's saying not to risk more than 1% per trade. I think that's a lie. And it's not what the highest earners do. So I'm going to give you a lot of data points here. I've been reading, man, I read Market Wizards. A lot of the Market Wizards are risk 5% per trade. Wasn't unusual. Um, Richard Dennis took a couple hundred dollars to a couple hundred million dollars over 20 years. He averaged 100% per year for 20 years. He survived many, many drawdowns. Um, many 50% drawdowns. Many 50% drawdowns he came back from. He taught his turtles, his traders that worked for him, to risk 2% per position. And they were saying they thought he was taking 10 times the risk, 100 times, just crazy. I guess you cannot really risk a hundred times but and he's known for in the end he lost his managed money because he drew down 50% but if you're trading personal you can draw down 50% there's no investors to care you come back from that okay let's give you and Nicholas Darvis did not risk 1% he took on some large risk um, my favorite one is the prop firms where the standard is risk 1% of your account. Say you have a 100K account. Don't risk more than $1,000. Yo, you only have 10K of drawdown. You're risking 10% per trade. You're risking 10 to 20% per trade. I'm not saying that's wrong. In fact, that seems to be right. Like, that's what works for people. I don't see anyone saying risk 0.1%. I see people risking... The lowest risk I even hear about is 0.5% which is still 5%, still 5%. And I think that's one of the reasons why people are able to blow up through prop firms, or were able to. It's part of it's the leverage, but part of it is it changed the way that they thought about risk, and that they were able to be comfortable risking 10 to 20% of their account per trade. And yeah, you blow up, yeah, you lose everything. That'll happen. And I'm not, this is not financial advice. I know people tell you to risk 1%, because they don't want to be responsible for you blowing up. I don't want to be responsible for you blowing up. You need to have an edge, first and foremost. You need to have an advantage. That advantage needs to be quantifiable, provable mathematically, so that you understand it, so that you know it's real, and that you know that you can come back, and you know that you can risk big. You know what your stats are. You know how much you can risk, and what the distribution is, the odds of having 20% drawdown, 30% drawdown. 50% drawdown, uh, whatever it is, you know, there's a risk of ruin calculator out there. It's a good practice to gather your stats and go, go in there. Now, what I am saying is people blow up for a prop risking 10, 20%. If you risk 10, 20% in your personal, you might lose your account, but you also might blow the fuck up, right? So... <laughs> The small guys who made it didn't do it risking 1%. They did it risking big. They did it, a lot of it in offshore brokers. Once you really make it, you go to 1% and 
and you can risk 1% and go the slow way, build a track record, whatever. Like if you want to run a hedge fund, hedge funds, which is hard to do to get the managed money, uh, the marketing for that, but hedge funds want you to risk small. They don't like big returns because they don't like the volatility associated with it. But, and it's, you know, with managed money, like a 50% drawdown may be game over, like we saw with Dennis. But it's not game over for your personal account. It's bad. But, yeah, you look at the turtles and uh, you look at the turtles month by month equity while they were trading for Dennis. There would literally be a negative 50% month and the next month is 182%. And it's like, these people have different conception of risk, right? So what does this mean for you? I'm not gonna tell you what it means for you, but for me, I have a known quantifiable edge. I'm not risking 1% per trade. I'm risk, risking more if I can. Sometimes, sometimes I can't because I don't have infinite leverage and I have a lot of positions on. But I mean, and I'm not, I'm not very comfortable. Yeah, I mean, with correlated positions, like I'm okay risking five percent. I know I can come back from losses, and I know I'm going to grow my account way faster, right? If you have an edge, and you're willing to take on the risk the returns just the returns are, are, are way bigger if you're willing to risk more but again you need to know you need to know how much it's a tight rope it's a tight rope because you can blow up and or you could lose 99 percent, and then there's no coming back from that you need to find some new money somewhere so but i don't like risking one percent I don't like it. You might say, well, like if I don't know my edge, I want to risk small. Don't risk anything. If you don't know your edge, don't trade at all. You can start trading 1%. And then once you have your live testing, tracks your back testing, tracks your data, start risking more. Again, not financial advice. I'm just talking to myself. But if you want to, yeah, I mean, if you want to do multiples, you want to do multiples of your 100, 100%, 200, 300%. Risking 1% is not necessarily the way to go. I mean, think about it. You could do, say that you do, say say you do 10R a month, which is hard, but it's possible. The best guys do 10R a month, at least. You risk 0.5%, you do 5% a month, compounding, we'll say, you do like 70, 80% in a year, which is doable. Say you risk 3% and you do the five with the 10 R a month, and you're doing 30%, like you're gonna get huge fast, and it's not gonna last forever. You may say like, and people like to say, <laughs> right, if you start with a dollar and you do 50% a month, you're gonna have all the money in the world. Yeah, well, trading scales to a certain point and then it doesn't work anymore because you get too big, you start to move the market, whatnot. But it's possible to go from hundreds of dollars to hundreds of millions. Richard Dennis is not the only story of that. There's stories out there. There's plenty of stories out there. C Christian Quill Maggie, what did he go from? Like thousands, less than 10,000 to hundreds of millions in I think like seven years, something like that. Guess what? He risked more than 1%. I think he risked 2 or 3%. And he took a lot of trades. So, yeah, risking 1% is something safe people like to tell you. But, again, even when people are saying it, usually in the context of prop, they're telling you to risk 10 or 20%. So when you go from trading prop to trading your personal, what are you going to Are you going to risk 1% or are you going to risk 10%? I suggest something in between. But, again, you have to know that you have an edge and that you can follow that edge and that edge is playing out. So I think starting with 1% is fine, but then after a month, two months, ratchet it up and be prepared for the drawdowns.
So let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know if you think it's useful. Beautiful day and the round's over. Peace. Look forward to hearing what you have to say.